This is going to be a rundown of the training I use to pass selection to be part of and then operate in Special Forces. How that's changed and how it looks now. At the end, I'll also give you my top three principles for keeping a physical edge in life. Let's start by summarizing what a Special Forces soldier requires of their body, which is to have a strong, resilient tactical chassis that's fit and resistant to injury. This is where the concept of being hard to kill comes from. Because you are gonna be putting your body on a huge amount of stress. If you can't take that, it's a problem. In 2008, I went through basic training to become a Royal Marines commando. Four weeks away from passing out, I got the worst injury of my entire military career. The Tarzan assault course is one of the commando tests and it's a fucking blowout from start to finish. One section involves jumping from a platform onto a cargo net. But instead of grabbing on with both hands, you punch your arm through and lock it off to secure yourself. On this morning, it was raining. I was wearing my belt kit and had my rifle, so about 30 pounds of weight. I launched onto the net, punched through, and then my foot slipped off. I took the full weight on my arm and tore my pec off the shoulder bone. You can see here, I no longer have my pectoral muscle. I should have taken time out to have surgery and rehab, but I wanted to finish training with my original troop. And that's what I did with a lot of painkillers. In hindsight, I should have got it fixed. But I was so intent on finishing basic training as an original member of my troop, I didn't care. However, even if you've got the strongest will in the world, you still need the physicality to back that up. I was 24 when I joined the Marines. I started training seriously when I was 16. In that eight years, I built a solid foundation of strength, which meant I could crack on and pass even with that injury. The point, when you make yourself robust, it gives you a powerful advantage. And I carried that ethos with me through to prepare for selection, which I started training seriously for in 2010. I was using a CrossFit style approach combined with endurance training, but not the CrossFit it is today. Back then, it was more about GPP, general physical preparedness. It sold itself on training for military, law enforcement, and jobs that required functional fitness for the real world. It was about building a big engine, being conditioned and having applicable strength. Now, I feel that CrossFit is more orientated to the games with more emphasis on Olympic lifting and gymnastics. Moves that are harder to master and in my view, unnecessary if your goal is GPP and not to compete as a CrossFit athlete. I did my first tour of Afghan at this time as a Royal Marines tactical signaler attached to special forces. Using that CrossFit endurance training mix, I got to probably the fittest I've ever been. I could run a 40 minute 10K and still deadlift 220 kilos. I wanted to start selection knowing that I had a big tank of reserve because fatigue makes cowards of us all. The fitter and stronger you are, the more energy you're gonna have left for the task in hand. If I'm on a gun range and I'm running on empty, it's gonna be very hard to make sound tactical judgments. Whereas if I'm only hitting 60 or 70% of my max, it leaves all that energy left in the tank to think clearly and act decisively when I'm under pressure. And there is no doubt that helped me pass selection. And I carried those same principles through my career, particularly the emphasis on GPP training. Because in UKSF, you're the jack of all trades, master of none. Unlike our counterparts, DevGrew, AKA SEAL Team 6, we don't have the manpower to only concentrate on one specific area. On the counter-terrorism rotation, you've got long dives to target, climbing ladders, clearing ships. Then you might switch back to Green Army style soldiering, carrying 140 pounds on your back, or being deployed to the desert or the jungle, fighting in 40 degrees of heat and humidity. So you need to have a well-rounded robustness that keeps you injury-free and enables you to maximize your mission performance. I stopped serving in 2015, but I still strive for this for three reasons. One, everyday armor. I want a strong health insurance policy as I get older. The BMJ published a systematic review showing a clear dose response relation between physical activity and all cause mortality. So the more you train, the more you make yourself literally harder to kill. It lowers rates of cardiovascular disease 
and cancer, and the science in this is growing stronger by the day. Two, opportunity cost. If I wanna go for a two hour hike, or enter a Spartan race, or go deadlift at double body weight, or go mountain biking, or do some grappling, I want to be able to do all of that without worrying if I'm capable of it, or if I might injure myself. Three, enjoying life. I want to offset injury and illness and be able to do any activity I choose because I want to make the most of life. Not only now, but when I'm in my 50s, my 60s, my 90s. Strength, fitness, mobility, these are all use it or lose it. Without training, you become weaker and less able. I firmly believe that making physical training a part of your lifestyle in whatever form is essential. You are gonna be more resilient. You will have greater capacity to deal with pressure and you are gonna open yourself up to more opportunities. Building a strong body is gonna save you from a lot of problems in life in the long run. And it's gonna give you an edge in a world where constant comfort is making everyone weaker, which you can see more about here.